What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Halloween 2, continuing the Halloween review series, preparing for Halloween Kills coming out later on this month. So I need to get the show on the road and knock out all these great Halloween movies and the not so great ones as well. But today it's Halloween 2. This is the sequel to the original John Carpenter 1978 Halloween. And in this one, we pretty much continue right where Halloween left off. And we're going to discover a little more about Michael Myers, including his actual motives for why he is committing these murders and who he's after and why he targeted Laurie Strode. Overall, I love Halloween 2. I'm going to come out and say it. I think this is a great companion piece to the first film. It, like I said, picks up right where it left off. And everything, not everything, I'll get into that, but for the most part, what happens is pretty logical here. Most of this film takes place in a hospital. It's a pretty creepy hospital with not a lot of people. It's kind of dark. It kind of makes sense. You know, there's not going to be a lot of people in the hospital at this particular time. But there's people going to the emergency room, and, you know, there's some patients are going to be there, and there's some staff, and, you know, it's, it's a hospital in a relatively small town in the late 70s. And after what happened to Laurie Strode, it would make sense. She would be taken to the hospital. So a lot of this film takes place there. And I think it's a great setting, you know, to change things up, but still have some more Michael Myers. And, you know, just the way that the story continues, the overall plot, I thought, was pretty pretty good. Pretty damn good. But what I really like about this film is it just kind of ups the horror, ups the gore, and still without going way over the top, although... What I've read is that originally it wasn't going to have that much gore. It wasn't going to be, you know, overly gory. But John Carpenter actually, because he didn't direct it, but John Carpenter saw it and was like, hey, we need to add some more gore, especially because Friday the 13th had come out. And, you know, it was in the 80s, the early 80s. So other films were starting to kind of take inspiration from that first Halloween film, but they were up in the gore. So, you know, was it a good decision? That's kind of debated. I think overall it probably was a good decision. I don't know exactly what scenes he added in, but I know there are some badass scenes in here like the scene where michael myers kills the girl by dumping her head in the scalding hot water completely horrific and just insane brutal kill right there and several others throughout this film although there are a few that don't make a lot of sense like one girl was just dead with the iv dripping blood slowly just losing like yeah i just don't take michael myers i, I don't i don't see him as someone to, to do with weird kills like interesting kills this ain't john kramer from saw or something or you know this guy's just gonna take his knife and just kill you i would think just brutally kill you the the water scene i didn't mind because hey there's a bunch of hot water here why not turn up the water and just dunk her head in it i mean that's an easy way to kill this girl so you know it makes sense you want to be a little bit creative with the kills but i thought that the iv drip kill was was pretty weird but overall i mean i thought this was a very solid sequel way better than the majority of horror sequels that follow up a really successful first film. I looked like more than a money grab. It looked like they really did their best to write a strong script, to make a good movie. You could tell a little more money was put into it. And overall, it's just a really fun movie. Is it brilliant like the first one? I wouldn't say so because there are some flaws, but I wouldn't say that I enjoy it much less or that I am less excited for it. That's just not the case. I see the flaws, I see that it's not quite masterpiece level like the first one, but as far as my personal enjoyment, it's pretty damn close, if not even more sometimes. The original Halloween has to spend a lot of time, which is what makes it great. I get that, but it spends a lot of time building up. And then, of course, you get a lot of suspense and you're waiting to find out, you know, what's going on. And, you know, it just takes a little longer. This one pretty much right off the bat, boom, you know, we just pick up where we left off and Michael Myers is on his killing spree. And you still got Donald Pleasance. He's back. He's awesome. You got Jamie Lee Curtis. She's back. She's awesome. Are they both utilized in the best way? Maybe not. You know, I would have loved to see more Jamie Lee Curtis, more Laurie Strode you know dealing with michael myers but you know what she after she what she went through in the first movie it would make sense that you know she's going to be in a hospital right now she's going to run from him a little bit and you know she's not always going to be you know the center of attention all the time so during this movie there's a lot of kills from just random people in the hospital but i mean that's 
pretty much what you're gonna get what you're gonna see right here that was a more realistic scenario is that michael myers is gonna if he's looking for Lori strode he goes to the hospital he's gonna kill people along the way he's not just gonna pass by and say hello good morning good evening no, he's gonna kill your ass and that's what i really like about this movie it's a freaking terrifying movie the hospital setting michael myers going around killing people while he's looking for Lori strode and then you have donald sutherland i said donald so i'm sorry donald pleasance looking for uh, Michael Myers and you know there is some weirdness here like the the early scene where he's looking and there's gonna be some small spoilers So forgive me, you know some spoilers spoiler alert is old movie Hopefully you've seen all these Halloween movies as we prep for the new one But anyway, you know, so he's looking for Michael Myers see someone dressed up very similar to Michael Myers makes sense Turns out to be Ben Tramer who was mentioned in the original film as somebody that maybe Laurie Strode would be interested in dating Perhaps so interesting that he shows back up, but he gets killed and it was just a really weird scene because, you know, he walks out in the street. If you've seen the scene on a cop car is just flying down the road, 90 miles an hour. I mean, I know he got a call or something and there was an emergency, but he's flying 90 miles an hour. Ben Tramer kind of is confused because, you know, you had uh, Donald Pleasance over there screaming at him. Ah, that's him. That's him. And so he's, you know, walks in and kind of kind of confused. He's like, what the hell's going on? I think I'll walk uh, across the street. And then this cop car just slams into him and crushes this van, pins him against it, killing him. And then, of course, flames burst out. It looked very unrealistic. And I'm just wondering, what is the police officer? Why is he flying? And, and if Ben Tramer wasn't there, was he just going to get into a huge accident? If Ben wasn't there, he was just going to smash into that van? The scene didn't make sense. I still, to, to this day, have not really been explained to what happened there and why that would happen. And to add insult to injury, there's a massive mistake in that scene because you can see Ben Tramer's body just kind of bloop like fall down and his whole torso and head all falls there onto the car and then in the next shot he's straight up so there's a movie mistake in there as well not to mention the fact that the whole thing didn't make a whole lot of sense to me and there were certain cliches in this movie like no way you had Lori Strode when she was running out of the hospital it happens to you know get in a car to she has the keys and the car won't start of course the car won't start why would the car start and then there's a scene where Lori Strode's like in, in, a, in a corner sitting down. She has a gun and Michael Myers is there. Not, not super close, but, you know, he's in the same room and she points the gun at him. Boom, boom, takes out both eyes. She's sitting there terrified, shaking, but yeah, she manages to uh, just shoot him directly in both eyes. I'm like, that's pretty unlikely. I mean, damn, what is she? Freaking sharpshooter, freaking expert shot here, freaking Green Beret here, Lori Strode, freaking Jason Bourne now. I don't know what's going on. So a few little cliche moments. There's others that you know make it all just you no know, not quite at the brilliant level of the original that doesn't really have anything like that too much that i could think of but other than that as far as just a solid sequel that ups the gore you know and you still it's not like it's devoid of suspense you still have some suspense in this movie they do it very well partly because of that great music the score is back it's a little more digital digitized it's a little different but it's still really cool and it's utilized very, very well. And overall, um, I just love Halloween 2. I can never wait for Halloween 2. When I'm watching Halloween 1, when it's wrapping up, I'm like, oh boy, Halloween 2, here we come. And I really love the final scene and one of the final scenes of this movie. And a great line, which was supposed to be the last line given by Dr. Loomis. And I thought this was a badass moment. It's time, Michael. I thought the acting was better. Still not perfect, but I and I thought the acting, other than the, you know Donald Pleasant, Jamie Lee Curtis are awesome pretty much all the time. But I thought some of the other characters in the first one weren't that great of actors. I think they're a lot better overall. The cast is a lot better in Halloween too, and it's just a movie I love. You know, I mentioned some of the flaws. Some cliche moments, some mistakes, some things that don't make sense. Even Michael Myers writing, what did he write? Sam Haim um, on it, which I still don't know what the hell that means. Some, there's little clues to maybe the fact that there's some supernatural, you know, something going on with Michael Myers. I don't mind that because that is part of the lore and it continues to get expanded throughout the franchise. But I just don't see him going to a school and painting Sam Haim on the wall. Um, you know, what's he doing? And of course, the big reveal in this one. A lot of people hate it. A lot of people don't mind it. I'm not going to lie. Like, I never really minded it growing up. You know, I watched this as a kid. I watched this throughout, you know, my childhood, 8 years old, 10, 12, 15, 20. Um, and not until I became an adult did it. Did I did one day that I watched it, watched the movie, and I was like, I don't know if I like the fact that Michael Myers is um, Laurie Strode's brother. 
and the way that it was revealed, it wasn't that great. And the fact that we never even see Laurie Strode to find this out, that was the real moment. And it just kind of shoehorned in there. It doesn't have the I am your father Star Wars type feel when it's revealed. And it's just kind of weird and also gives motive, like I mentioned at the beginning, it gives motive to him. And you knew that something was going to happen when she said, why me? Why me? They were developing the reason, which we would find out would be because they are related. And I guess he wants to kill his whole family, but he kills everyone else while he's at it. So he just seems like a vicious evil, the personification of evil. He's just a killer. He kills everyone. That's how I like it. But now he's got motive. He's got emotions. He's not just evil and just kills everything. Right? At least according to this movie. Which I don't think I like that that much. I, I don't think I like the fact that they are brother and sister. But again, it didn't bother me the first hundred watches. I was a kid, so it never bothered me. I just thought, hey, whatever, let's go. Um, I just love the movie. I, in fact, I didn't even notice probably any of the flaws I just mentioned until I got a little older. Um, growing up, I probably preferred Halloween 2 just because it's just crazier. It's more exciting. It feels more entertaining. But overall... I think Halloween, the original, is definitely the better movie. So that's my review for Halloween 2. I would say this movie is, in my opinion, freaking awesome. And if you watch the original Halloween, you must watch Halloween 2 immediately after. So I hope you enjoyed this review. Keep an eye out for Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, which has nothing to do with Michael Myers. Spoiler. So we'll get to that one next. And then Halloween 4. You see the poster behind me. Halloween 5. Halloween 6. You guys have a great day. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much.